Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL project on econometric modeling. This is Rudra Pradhan here. Today we will discuss the concept of univariate econometric modeling. First of all, what is univariate econometric modeling? It is a statistical analysis that considers only one factor or a variables at a time. It explores each variable in a data set separately and is very essential for multivariate analysis. So, univariate modeling is an essential condition for multivariate modeling. Uni univariate modeling also called as a descriptive statistics. It is, con it is concerned with the description or summarization of individual variables in a given data set. So, let me explain what is all about this univariate econometric modeling. Let us take a case here. <coughs> we have series of variables x 1, x 2 up to x n, y 1, y 2 up to y n. All right? So, this is what is all about multivariate framework of econometric modeling. So, here we are very much concerned about the statistical analysis of a particular variable or series of variables and their interrelationships. So, if we really go through this multivariate framework of econometric modeling, then usually we have two different sets of variables. Okay? One set of variables is called as a x 1, x 2 up to x n and another set of variables are called as a y 1, y 2 up to y n. Okay? This particular series called as a independent variable clusters, independent variable variable cluster and this particular series y 1, y 2, y n is called as a dependent variable clusters. So, multivariate framework or multivariate econometric modeling is nothing but the structure of or integration of independent variables and dependent variables. So, it is the game between independent variable and dependent variable otherwise it is also called as a endogenous variables and exogenous variables. There are two different situation altogether. Okay? Situation 1, one dependent, one dependent variables with several independent variables. So, the situation 1 is one, independ one dependent variable with the several independent variables. So, it, this particular structure is called as a simple multivariate framework, simple multivariate framework. 
simple multivariate framework or simple multivariate modeling. Okay. Situation 2, where there are several several dependent variables plus several independent variables. So, this particular structure is called as a simultaneous equation modeling or or and structural equation modeling. Okay? Structural equation modeling. So, we have two different games so far as a real world problem is concerned. So, one side we have one dependent variable with several independent variables. In other situation, we have series of dependent variables and series of independent variables. So, now let me take a case here. So, this is independent clusters, this is dependent clusters. Okay. So, we have independent clusters will be represent x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 like x n. All right. Dependent cluster we have y 1, y 2 up to y n. So, now when there is a question of situation 1, then we have to integrate y 1 with x 1, y 1 with x 2, y 1 with x 3 and so on with y 1 with x n or y 2 with x 1, y 2 with x 2, y 2 with x 3, y 2 with x 4 or y 2 with x x n. Like we can integrate y 3 with so many independent variables and y 4 with so many independent variables again y n with so many independent variables. So, this particular framework called as a simple multivariate econometric modeling. However, in the question of structural equation modeling, so the structure is completely different. So, that means here every variable has an integration with the other variables. This is the condition 1 and the condition 2 is there are series of dependent variables and series of independent variables. Okay. So, now within the detailed structures. So, we have to discuss here what is all about the univariate univariate econometric modeling. So, univariate econometric modeling is basically basically represented as here univariate econometric modeling represented as a UEM so, univariate econometric modeling. So, let me first highlight here what is the entire structure of this univariate modeling. Okay. So, the basic objective behind univariate modeling is that we have to describe or you have to summarize a particular variable in a given setup. Okay. If the setup consists of say 10 variables, we have to we have to analyze with a particular variable only. For instance, if we have x 1, x 2, x 3 up to x 10, then we like to know what is the futures of x 1, what is the futures of x 2, what is the future of x 3 and up to what is the future of x 10. Because it is the prime requirement of multivariate econometric modeling. Until unless you know all these structure and setup of univariate data setup, then you cannot go anything or you cannot get a better solutions. So, univariate econometric modeling deals with three issues. One is called as a central tendency, central tendency, then dispersion, then third is called as a skewness or kurtosis. So, what is central tendency? It is the single figure 
which describes the enter set of. So, the central tendency will give you indication about single figures. Okay. So, like this there are set of observation here. So, we have to target which particular observation is very important which can describe the entire issue. Okay. The uh, dispersion is within this setup again. So, it represents the variability of the observation in a particular variables. So, let us say this is this is variable say x 1. So, now these points are represented as x 1 1, x 1 2, x 1 3 up to say x 1 n all right. These are the variable uh, data points with a particular uh, variables. So, now which particular variable is the central or you can say center that describes the complete information within the structure or within that particular variable. So, now let us say this is a center here. Let's, let us call it x is a unit which represents the entire structure of this particular variable. So, now dispersion is the variability of the observation in a particular variable. So, now if it is x 6, so now we are very much concerned about how the x 6 co component is different from x 3, a, 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 x 1 1, x 1 2, x 3 1, 1 3 like this. Okay. So, we have to see whether this is equally distributed or unequally distributed and that objective is the framework of dispersion. Now, the skewness issue is the, uh, the general shape of the distributions. So, for the distribution is concerned, we have series of distribution like theoretical distribution, under theoretical distribution we have probability distribution, Poisson distribution, normal distribution, hyperbolic distributions and so on. But uh, for econometry modeling or basically statistical modeling, so the model will be best fitted or we can we can use that model or we can fit that model for better way, your data points should be normally distributed. So, that means, we are very much interested whether the setup is normally distributed or not. So, that means, we are very much interested to integrate the structure into normal distribution shape. So, that shape of the distribution is our concern and that is nothing but the skewness skewness component. Uh, so, far as quotasis is concerned, it is the flatness of the distribution. Again, it is within the setup of normal distribution. Okay. So, now, so, uh, we have three different structure of univariate modeling. So, one structure is the central tendency, another structure is the dispersion and another structure is the skewness. The objective is to find out the single figure which describes the entire issue. The second issue is the dispersion, how all other items are distance from other data points. Okay. So, this is what the dispersion objective and skewness is the shape of the distribution and kurtosis is the flatness of the distributions. So, now within the basic background or information about univariate setup. So, we like to know how the setup can be evaluated, can be interpreted and can be used further for uh, uh, multivariate econometric modeling. Let me first give you the framework of univariate econometric modeling. So, univariate econometric modeling as I have already mentioned, it has three different st structure altogether, central tendency, then dispersions, then it is a skewness and kurtosis. Okay. Under central tendency, we have three different set uh, uh, we have all together three different set of okay this is called as a mean set of this is median set of then this is mode set of so we have three different statistical tool under central tendency okay so this me median and mode is called as a positional average it's called as a positional average, mean is called as a mathematical average. Mean is called as a mathematical average. 
So, now similarly for dispersions we have two things one is called as a absolute measures absolute measure and another is called as a relative measure. Similarly, for the case of skewness we have two different set of one is called as a absolute measures and another is called as a relative measures. Okay. So, now we have to see what is the structure of central tendency, structure of dispersion and what is the structure of skewness. So, now under central tendency the objective can be evaluated through mean, median and mod. So, median and mod is represented as a positional average, mean is represented as a mathematical average, on the other side dispersion or variability of the in information can be observed in a absolute angle and can be observed in relative angle. Similarly, for skewness and kurtosis, we can have the absolute issue and also relative issue. So, now the mathematical uh, uh, average can be again various shapes. Okay. It is represented in three different formats arithmetic mean, geometric mean and harmonic mean. Okay. So, arithmetic mean is or it can be again calculated through simple structure and by assigning weight. Similarly, geometric mean can be calculated with a simple structure and by assigning weight. Harmonic mean can also be calculated in simple structure and by weight. Okay. So, now, now the structure of central tendency is that we like to know what is the mathematical average and what is the positional average. So, for a dispersion is concerned we like to know what is the absolute issue, what is the relative issue or how is the absolute measurement of that particular variable and what is the relative measurement of that particular variable. Similarly, in the case of skewness and kurtosis we like to know how the shape of the distribution in absolute angle and relative angle. Let me highlight here the central tendency structure first then we can proceed further for you can say econometric modeling issue. So, now this econometric modeling altogether is this here let us see uh, within the central tendency. So, let me first highlight the issue of arithmetic mean first. Okay. Uh, okay, this is mean first, then within the mean, then we have arithmetic mean, we have geometric mean and we have harmonic mean alright. So, now for arithmetic mean we have again simple average and weighted average. Okay. So, now the simple average is nothing but uh, x bar is equal to summation x i i equal to 1 to n divided by n. Okay. So, what is this? So, basically for a particular uh, setup, if we will consider a variable say x, then its information is represented as a x 1, x 2 up to x n. So, what we will call it? It is otherwise represented as a x i. When i equal to 1, then it becomes x 1. When i equal to 2, it becomes x 2. When i equal to 3, it becomes x 3 like when i equal to n it is x n. So, that means, one variable has the n number of information or observation. So, what is the fundamental issue of arithmetic mean in a simple structure? The fundamental uh, issue is to add all the observations value of that observation and divide by number of observation. That means, it is nothing but x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 up to plus x n divided by number of observations. Okay. So, this is what the a simple structure of arithmetic mean. When there is called a weighted average, then x bar is represented as in sometimes it is represented as a 
x bar w. Okay. So, it is nothing but summation f i x i i equal to 1 to n divided by n, okay, where this n represents summation f i i equal to 1 to n. So, that means, here w represents weight factors and that weight has to be represented in the form of frequency. For instance, if you take this particular variables x 1 x, uh, x 1 x 2 up to x n, then corresponding to each variables uh, variable information x and f we have frequency f 1 f 2 up to f n. Okay. So, what is the usual procedure now for weighted average? So, we have to multiply with f and x. Okay. So, we will get f 1 x 1 f 2 x 2 up to f n x n. Okay. So, finally, we like to know what is sum of f i x i i equal to 1 to n. That means, so x w is nothing but uh, w 1 uh, sorry f 1 x 1 plus f 2 x 2 plus f n x n divided by n. n represents sum of sum of f i okay, i equal to 1 to n which is designated as a n. Okay. This is the structure of weighted average. So, weighted average structure is like this and this is the structure of simple arithmetic mean. So, now uh, let me uh, uh, highlight two things here. So, one important issue is here the, uh, the property of arithmetic mean. One of the interesting properties is some of the deviation of arithmetic mean from its from its mean is equal to 0. So, that means sum of x minus x bar is equal to 0, sum of the deviation of i term from the arithmetic mean is equal to 0. Okay. Second issue is uh, since x bar equal to summation x by n, so that implies summation x is always equal to n into x bar. This is for verification only. Third issue is it can be have combined mean. So, x 1 2 bar is nothing but n 1 uh, okay, combined mean. The third important property is here the combined mean. So, third important property is combined this is nothing but n 1 x 1 divided plus n 2 x 2 divided by n 1 plus n 2. All right. So, now what is all about that issue? That means, let us say there are two variables x 1 and x 2. So, corresponding x 1, so you have information x 1, x 2 up to x n, you have information uh, x, uh, x let us take x 1, 1, 2, 1, uh, uh, n 1, then x 2, 1, x 2, 2 up to x 2 n, all right. Or otherwise we can put like this uh, x, uh, x, uh, x 1, 1, then x 2, 1, uh, x 3 1 up to x uh, n 1 all right. Then similarly this side we can put x 1 1 x uh, 1 2 x sorry 2 1 2 2 then 2 3 up to x 2 n. Okay. So, now we like to know what is n here. So, uh, that is represented as n 1 and that is represented as x 1. Similarly, this side we like to know what is n 2 and what is x 2, x 1 bar, x 2 bar. So, within a n 1, x 1 bar and n 2, x 2 bar, we have to calculate the combined mean. So, that is the joint case of uh, the two variables. All right. So, this is what the uh, arithmetic mean with respect to its simple structure and weighted structures. So, now come down to the structure of geometric mean here. Geometric mean can be also calculated with the simple structure and weighted structure. So, now uh, for uh, series of variables say x, x 1, x 2 up to x n, then geometric mean usually call, uh, usually denoted as a small g is nothing but x 1 multiplied by x 2 multiplied by x n to the power 1 by n. 
So, this is what the calculation of geometric mean. Okay. So, now for uh, for weighted issue then we can call it G w which is nothing but uh, x 1 f 1 multiplied by x 2 f 2 multiplied by x 3 f 3 multiplied by x n f n to the power 1 by n all right. So, this is the structure of the geometric mean in the case of harmonic mean this is also simple structure and weighted structure. So, now in the case of harmonic mean it is nothing but n by summation 1 by x i i equal to 1 to n. Okay. In the case of weighted average, so a harmonic mean with weighted average is nothing but n by summation f i by x i i equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, now so, we get to know what is the setup of a mathematical average that is arithmetic mean, geometric mean and harmonium means. Again that is with respect to simple structure and weighted structure. So, now within, within this basic setup, within the basic setup of this uh, mathematical average then you will come down to the positional average. This positional average is with respect to first is the median case, first is with respect to median case. So, what is this median? Median is nothing but uh, uh, or you can say middle value of the sequence. So, that means, once you have a series of observation the objective of median is you have to find out a particular variable or value which can divide the observation into two equal parts okay 50% uh, means 50% above and 50% below so that means so uh, median can be calculated in a simple structure it can be calculated in simple structure under simple structures the framework is like this n by 2 provided if n is n is even n represents number of observation in the setup okay so now when n plus 1 by 2 when or if n is odd okay so this is what the the simple structure of median calculation so now uh, you remember this median is a positional average so, now the n by 2 and n plus 1 by 2 will give you the position to describe the uh, issue. So, now uh, for a reality or you can say complex problem the value of median will be calculated like this L plus n by 2 minus C f by f into i. Uh, L represents lower limit of the class n represents number of observations in the system, C f represents cumulative frequency, cumulative frequency of the preceding, preceding median class, f represents class frequency class frequency of median class. Okay. Then I represents class interval, class interval. Okay. So, now for uh, you know uh, whether it is a mean issue, median issue or mod issue, there are two different ways we have to calculate. One is simple setup, another is called as a discrete or continuous setup. When there is the structure is a very simple structure, then we have to just use the positional issue or you can say simple issue like summation x i by n or n by 2 by or n plus 1 by 2, but when the structure is 
all about the issue of descriptive series or continuous series, then the calculation procedure is somewhat different. So, now median structure is here uh, L plus n by 2 minus C f by f into i. Okay. So, I will give you detailed example how we have to calculate or how you have to use this particular formula when the problem is something different and you have to apply this particular formula when the problem is something else. Okay. So, now come down the mod issue. So, now mod is altogether mod is also positional average, it is the value of variable which has highest frequency, value of variable which has highest frequency, highest frequency. Okay. So, now this is again give you the positional issue, this is give you the positional issue this is give you positional issue when the structure is individual series or simple structure. So, now when there is a discrete series or continuous series then the mod calculation will be mod will be L plus del 1 by del 1 plus del 2 into i. So, del 1 is nothing but f 1 minus f 0 and del 2 is nothing but f 1 minus f 2. So, this is sequen f 0 represents f 0 represents frequency of the model class and f 1 represents frequency of the preceding mo model class. preceding model class and f 2 represents uh, frequency of frequency of the following model class following model class. Okay. So, now I represents class interval. So, I represents here class interval. Okay. I represents class intervals. So, now let me take a case here. So, how do you calculate all these issues? Let us take a case example here. So, now there is a series here. This series it is with individual issues. So, now the examples which we have cited here, we have series of information 52. 76, 100, 136, 186, 196, 205, 150, 250, 257. Like this, we have to proceed, proceed. Then we have 791 and 891. So, now our objective is to know what is the mean value here, what is the median value here, and what is the mode value here. So, for as a mean is concerned, we like to know what is the value of this observations and what is the number of observation. So, now for simple arithmetic mean we have to just add all these items divide by number of observations. So, number of observation you have to find out what are the number of observation here. So, now uh, uh, if you follow that procedure you can have the mean value. Sim similarly, for the median issue, so for uh, the procedure of median calculation is that we have to first arrange these items in ascending and descending. So, now the moment if uh, the moment you will arrange it ascending and descending, then you have to apply the positional issue. So, that means, if the series is even then you have to apply n by 2, if the series is odd then you have to apply n plus 1 by 2. So, this will give you indication what is the median of that particular series. So, the way you will calculate that median then 50 percent observation will be above and 50 percent observation will be below. So, now similarly in the case of mod, so we have to first arrange the items in sequence, then you have to see what is the frequency of each items. So, now mod will be the value of that particular series depends upon the highest frequency. So, with the basis of high, highest frequency you have to calculate the mod. For instance, let us take a case of 150. So, 150 item we, we have to find out where, whether it is available in other place. 
So, now if it is available in other place, we have to see how many times. Okay. Similarly, take a case of 196, that means what is the best procedure is that like this. The best procedure is that you have to see here, uh, uh, take a case of items. So, now the, these are all items, then it is corresponding frequency. Okay, frequency. So, now you check it here 52. All right, let us take a case of 52. So, now uh, again 76, then 100, then 136, then 186, 196, 20, uh, 205, then 150, then 257, then 264, then 264. So, now if you compare here 76, here uh, sorry 52, this is 1. 76 1, 101, 136 1, 186 1, 196 1, 295 1, 151, 257 1, 264 1. So, since you see a, a, again 264, so instead of writing here, you put it in mark here. Okay. So, now instead of 264, you put it here 280. Okay. So, now you have to see how many 280s are there. If it is 1 here, then if it is again 280, you put mark here, if again 280, you put mark here, then finally, you have to observe how many frequencies are there. Let us say 250, 280 is there, so this is available in 3 times, so its frequency is nothing but 3, here the frequency is nothing but 2, this is 1, 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 this is 1. So, now uh, there may be other series also there may be other series also, but within the particular setup. So, we can call it this is the model class, because the it is the highest frequency in the particular series. So, this way we have to calculate the calculate the value of uh, mod. Okay. So, now we have to proceed further for uh, uh, other other uh, other issue of this uh, particular uh, univariate econometric modeling. Okay. So, now univariate econometric modeling, we have the set of central tendency, dispersions and skewness. Okay. So, central tendency, we have already discussed what is the structure and how is, is it, how is it is set up. So, now, so far as the dispersion is concerned, we have two different structures, one is called as a absolute 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 structures and another is called as a relative structure. So, that means absolute measure of dispersion absolute measure of dispersion and relative measure of dispersion. Under absolute measure of dispersion, we have series of techniques, we have series of techniques a range quartile deviations, then mean deviations, then standard deviations. Okay. And under relative measure of dispersions, we have three different techniques called as a coefficient of variations, coefficients of quartile deviation, coefficients of mean deviations, okay. coefficients of um, vari coefficient variation, coefficient quartile deviation, coefficient of mean deviation. So, now I will explain what is all about oh, oh, all about these components. Let us start with range, how do we calculate this range. Okay. Range is the difference between a max maximum of the series and minimum of the series. Okay, in this particular uh, in this particular example, in this particular example, if you like to know what is the range, then you have to see what is the highest number of this particular series. Then what is the lowest ram, uh, uh, lowest value of that particular series? Then the difference will give you range. Uh, in a econometric modeling if the range value is very high, then obviously, it is the negative aspects of econometric modeling. So, the econometric modeling will be better or you can get better fitted model, if your descriptive information or univariate information is very accurate. For instance, for this particular issue range, if the range is very minimum, that means, it, it automatically give you the spreadness of that particular variables. If the range is very small, then obviously, the dispersion is very low. So, that means, the variability of that particular variable is 
you can say a, a low. So, it will be better indication for further econometric modeling. So, similarly, come down to quartile deviation. So, quartile deviation is nothing but the difference between q 3 minus q 1 by 2. So, third quartile minus first quartile divided by 2. What is third quartile? So, third quartile we have we have to get by L plus 3 n by 4 minus C f by C f by A f into I ok and q 1 equal to L plus n by 4 minus C f by f into I. We have already discussed what is C f. This is a cumulative frequency of the preceding median class and uh, uh, f represents frequency of the median class, i represents class re interval, l represents layer limit of the series, q 3 represents third quartile and q 1 represents first quartile. So, so far as quartile deviation is concerned, so it is calculated with the reference of third quartile minus first quartile by 2. Okay. So, now come down to mean deviations. So, mean deviation is nothing but 1 by n summation x i minus x bar ok it is in deviation format so the speciality of this uh, component is that it is the it ignores usually sign so the moment you will take deviation then the minus component will be loss component so as a result it may be a, a better uh, for you can say calculation but it has also limitation because the negative signs are ignoring so, now this is what the procedure of mean deviation. Uh, if there is a frequency, then obviously you have to add frequency here, then accordingly you have to calculate the mean deviation. Okay. So, now uh, come down to uh, standard deviation. Standard deviation is nothing but summation x i minus minus x bar whole square i equal to 1 to n to the power. 0.5. So, this is the calculating procedure of standard deviations. Okay. So, now you get to know what is range, what is quartile deviation, what is mean deviation, what is standard deviation. And uh, I am just explaining the uh, simple structure that is with respect to individual series. So, when the series is continuous and discrete, then obviously the calculating procedure of all these components starting from central tendency to dispersion is completely different. Though they, there is the lots of integration or similarity, but the uh, only the problem is the calculation uh, procedure. So, now standard deviation is basically the square root of this you can say sum of the uh, observations from its central point. Okay. So, now uh, come down to relative measure of central tendency. On the relative measure of central tendency, the first standard technique is called as a coefficient variation. Coefficient variation is simply represented as a sigma by x bar multiplied by 100. Sigma usually represented as a standard deviation. Okay. The square of standard deviation is called as a various variance. Okay. So, now uh, come down to coefficient of quartile deviation. So, coefficient of quartile deviation is calculated with respect to median. So, now qu quartile deviation divided by median multiplied by 100 will give you coefficient of quartile deviation, then some coefficient of mean deviation. So, coefficient of mean deviation is nothing but mean deviation about mean with respect to mean or median. Mean deviation by mean multiplied by 100. This is coefficient of mean deviations. Okay. So, now uh, uh, this is the uh, calcul calculating structure of uh, the relative measure of uh, relative measure of standard deviations. So, we we have complete information how to calculate uh, how to calculate the uh, absolute measure of dispersion and how to calculate the relative measure of dispersion. So, the, uh, the important difference between the absolute measurement and relative measurement is that uh, in the first case the structure is not unit free, but in the second case the structure is completely unit free. So, that is why a uh, relative measure of dispersion is the best measure than the absolute measures. So, now so far as the technique wise uh, concept uh, is concerned, 
so in the case of central tendency the best average is considered as a, a, a arithmetic means because it is very simple very structured and it is very reliable and in the case of uh, in the case of uh, dispersion in fact standard deviation is considered as the best technique under absolute measure but in reality coefficient variation is considered as the best technique because it is the unitless unitless measurement and it is a relative issue i will give you the very practical examples let me let me take a case what is the a, 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 what is the a, a exact issue or difference between the central tendency dispersion and skewness because there is a beautiful structure and you know stepwise process so now when there is a question of uh, you know uh, central tendency central tendency will give you only positional issue and you can say mathematical issue but there when there is a question of comparative analysis then obviously there is a there is a issue where two variables are there and we like to compare the two variables there may be possibility that the mean of that particular variables is a same so that means if x1 is a variable and x2 is a variable and number of observations are same or different then obviously we like to know what is the average of this particular series then you can say that this if the average is high for second uh, series then the first then you can say that this uh, second is better than first or first is better than second okay now the situation will be completely different if the mean of both the series will be equal then in that case you cannot get any conclusion or you cannot make a compa comparative analysis in that case we have to go or you have to proceed further to dispersion the series may, may have equal means but the dispersion will be completely different so now equal mean may have unequal variance or unequal standard deviations so now only mean cannot be sufficient to represent the univariate structure of econometric modeling so you need to have a dispersion so variability structure so variability will give you the indication uh, or comparative analysis between this series again let's take a case of mean is mean is same and standard deviation is also same for both the cases then still you you like to uh, have a comparative analysis and in that case there may be some situation even a mean is equal and you can say standard deviation also equal then still you cannot get a conclusions so in that case you have to apply a relative measure of dispersions or you can go for you can say skewness and kurtosis let me uh, take another issue here uh, uh, particularly take a case of absolute measure of dispersion and relative measure of dispersions uh, yes of course there is a two different problems let's take a case of forex foreign exchange issues so take a case of japanese currency yen and another case is us dollar okay so now some of the observations are in yen form and some of the observations are in dollar form so now we like to know what is the what is the stability of yen and what is the stability of dollars so now to know the stability of dollar and yen you need to have apply uh, the a, a standard technique called as a uh, dispersion so the a, the tech, a, the component stability component will be more stable if the variations or variability is very less okay so now in the case of uh, in the case of uh, say yen if the standard deviation or variance is very high then you can say that it is not stable but in other case if it is say the variation is very less then you can say that it is stable so that means the stability of a particular currency depends upon the variability structure if the standard deviation is very low then the uh, currency is a very stable one if the standard deviation is very high then obviously the currency stability is uh, in uh, currency stability is not uh, too uh, too good it may be negative so that means it is not at all stable that may be instability so now in that case uh, the example may be in a different shape for instance uh, this is issue how you have to measure the stability but uh, suppose uh, i like to compare the yen with dollar which is more effective and more accurate 
but in that case sometimes it may be more complicated also. For instance, the moment you will get the result by applying standard deviation for yen and for US dollar and obviously, if the items are represented in yen, then the mean and standard deviation you will get it in yen. But if you have the observation in dollars, then obviously, the mean and standard deviation you will get it in also dollars. But uh, uh, if it is a comparative analysis, then the mean which is in mean standard deviation which are in yen and other side mean standard deviation which are in dollar format cannot be comparable, because yen and dollars are completely different. There is the foreign exchange market, we can make the distinguish, but in that case statistics is very uh, handy. So, if you apply econometric tool particularly coefficient variation or coefficient of quartile deviation or coefficient of mean deviation, then obviously, this particular problem can be solved without any additional information. Suppose you have information what is the dollar value and what is the UN value, then you can transfer either EN into EN or dollar into dollar, then you make a comparative analysis. But if you have no information, such information, then you just apply the standard statistical tool say coefficient variation, then you can get the result. So, this is how you have to be very careful to solve the particular problems, right. So, now we have to move down to another issue. Uh, let me let me give a brief uh, uh, idea about to the structure of individual series and you can say a discrete series and continuous series. I have discussed detail uh, about to the calculation of mean, median, mode and st standard deviations uh, uh, and also coefficient variance etcetera. So, there may be uh, some issues here with respect to discrete series and continuous series. So, now there are series of uh, structure here. So, all the structure are almost all same here. Here we are just uh, whatever discussion we have till now, we are just following the particular uh, particular format that is individual series components. When there is a discrete component, then obviously, weight factor has to be assigned. And in the case of continuous series, then obviously, the interval structure must be there and that interval may be in a, a, a particular you can say class interval. So, with that class interval and you can say proper structure, we have, we have to calculate the mean and you can say a standard deviation or coefficient variation in different way. The complete calculating procedure is altogether different, but the result is almost all same. Uh, uh, in the, uh, the detailed structure of calculation, I may highlight in different uh, class, because it is not possible now to take a example to solve. So, uh, uh, we will discuss in next class the detail about when we will go for bivariate modeling that time I will explain how it can be possible when the series is in completely a discrete series and continuous series. So, now I will explain one thing here uh, that is the uh, uh, one other aspects of this particular problem that is skewness and uh, 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 kurtosis. The skewness issue is nothing but shape of the uh, shape of the distributions. So that is, we like to know what is the position of this particular uh, series. So we usually look for normal distributions. Normal distribution, if it is normally distributed, then obviously the distribution is called as a symmetric distribution, where mean, median, mod are equal. If mean, median, mod are not equal, then this distribution is called as a skewed distribution. It may be negatively skewed, it may be positively skewed. Okay. So, now, so we need to have you can say uh, the structure like this, this is symmetrical 0 skew and when there is a positive negative skewed, then it is called as skewed distribution. Generally, we look for this, uh, this structure of data setup. If you have a data setup like this, then obviously, it is called as a symmetrical distribution and that is very, very effective for modeling or particularly multivariate modeling. If all these variable information is like this, then obviously, you are in the right track. If not, then obviously, your structure is completely different. If your data setup is not normally distributed, then obviously, you have to apply the transformation rule. 
we have series of transformation loop starting from exponential transformation, logarithm transformation and fast difference transformation. So, the way you will transfer the data automatically the series can be transferred into normal normally distributed. So, this is very important point to so this is another shape of the normal distribution. So, now and this is positive positive skewed distributions and this is what negative skewed distributions and this is the um, this is the case for both the distribution altogether. Right. So, now uh, last but not the least component under univariate melding is the kurtosis. It represents simply the flatness of the distributions. There are three reference structures. It is the uh, you take it here case is the this is one shape, this is another shape, this is another shape. So, this particular shape is called as a thin structure, this particular shape is called as a flat structure and this is what is the middle between this thin and flat. Generally within the setup we consider that this red structure is very beautiful and it is very effective for further molding. So, this is usual shape of the normal distribution curve which is usually called as a bell shaped curve. If it is like this then obviously, the structure is very feasible for further econometric molding. So, with this we have to finish this session here. So, we will discuss detail in the next class for you can say with beautiful examples and different structure. So, thank you very much have a nice day.